All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Mothla project for today. And uh, today we're gonna be working on the uh, second part of the wing. Yay! So that's gonna be great because you know we've already been working on it anyway. But we need to make sure that everything is working fine. So that's what we're gonna do. So uh, a bit. Do I have everything? Yeah, I do have everything right now. All right, so let's get started on this. Um, want to have everything back off, so that I can focus again on the whole one thing. So this is wing one, and we have wing two. So we're working on wing. We have wing three. That's yeah. That's the one thing. Right. Yes. All right. We're back in the normal business. We're back in the normal. Oh, hey, Blue. Nice to see you. So yeah, we're gonna be working on this bad boy over here. Now let's see if we still have the original thing on. Let's see. Yeah, this is the layer that I need. So let's see if it works. All right. Okay, it is the rightful color that I had before. Nice. So today we're gonna be we're gonna be drawing. Um, I want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up because you know that's the thing that I need to do. Um, I'm thinking about making an overlay for the uh, for the streams. So like an overlay, like how I do the coloring, and then you know have an overlay for the live chat and the video itself. So um, I don't know if that's a good thing to do, like an overlay and an intro and an outro. I don't know if that's a good thing, but probably it is. So, um, I'm gonna be doing some drawing on that too. So, maybe I will maybe start tomorrow already on it. So, yeah, it's one of the things that I want to actually get started on. So yeah, that's the thing that I'm gonna be doing. Anyway, well, uh, to make a make a make an uh, make the make the you know make the visuals a little bit more consisting. So I'm gonna make an uh, I'm gonna make an overlay that looks nice. So yeah, that's the thing that I'm gonna be doing. Well, at least that's the thing that I'm gonna be setting to do. I still don't know if I'm gonna go for like a little soundtrack as well. Eh. To just buy time, probably, probably. It just needs to be done. So need to figure out what the key settings are and all that stuff. So gonna do a little bit of experimenting on that part. So yeah, um, I hope you already enjoy what I'm already doing right now, like drawing and all that stuff, because you know it, it's important for me. So yeah, I'm tr I'm totally just enjoying myself right now. It's like I'm doing the drawing part, and it's really nice. Well, the coloring part, not the drawing part. Coloring part, not drawing. If I would be drawing, then I would have been doing other things than this. Yeah. So yeah. Well, right now I'm actually working on the you know. Uh, the begin sections of the wings, so I'm gonna be doing this again in the same way of how I did the other one as well. So I'm gonna be doing first just one part, then this part, and then keep the other parts away. So that's why you know it's important to have layers because then I can know what I need to what I need to color and whatnot. But because I cannot do that because I made a mistake in this layer, you know I need to just do a little bit more. 
calmly and progressively. So I need to just relax, figure out where the rings start and where the other section starts. And then put all that mind in one go. So yeah, I hope you're all going to be enjoying this. I hope so too. Or well, I hope at least that you're going to be enjoying this part. Because I will. I will. Definitely. It's like, I don't mind coloring, man. Coloring isn't as fun. It is not as fun as drawing, but you know. It needs to be done, and I need to do it. I need to do it precisely. Otherwise, it won't. Otherwise, it won't work. So yeah, I'm just gonna be taking my time. I'm just doing the coloring part, however I fit to be. Otherwise, things won't go well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Let's take a bigger look here because you know it's it's also very important that. You can already see where the color begins and where the color ends, and where I made some kind of, uh, tiny mistakes. Like, um, I made a mistake right here, and that is the layer overlay. So I don't know when the when the layers begin and when the layers end. The only way to know that is if I would have been knowing knowing it from the start, which I do. I do that. I know that because you know I know already where I drew and how I drew. Because you know I know my own draw. I I know my own drawing style, so it's not that hard for me to judge where everything is. It's just really hard for some people to, well, for me then at least to see like, oh, this tiny little feather belongs to me. This tiny little feather belongs there. That the one belongs there. So yeah, that's more. Like the thing I'm now need to worry about is that I need to make sure that every single thing is colored in, and every single time I drop, every single time I color, you can already see that there is a little fading in the uh, in the transparency. So this is all transparent. This is all transparent. But if I now you know switch to this, it's still transparent. I need to do it like a couple of times before it won't be transparent anymore. That's probably the hardest thing to accept, and that is that this software actually has like this tool does not have the right transparency. So it has like begins with transparency, ends with transparency. Normally, when you are drawing, you know you don't want to have actually transparency in the tool that you're using, unless it's intended. But because this tool has it, and I'm working with that tool to get the color right, I don't want to have another tool. Because I could use, like, for instance, right over here. Mm, that's good. I could use this tool instead, which has almost zero transparency in it. But the bad news about this tool is that sometimes transparency is needed. Sometimes it's better for me to do that. The other way, other way around, so uh, it's better sometimes to do it this way. Why? Um, it's because sometimes uh, I feel like I'm doing it the right, I'm doing the right way. So the other one, the other one feels a little bit too rough for me, so it doesn't feel natural when I'm coloring. Like, you know, I don't see where where everything begins and where everything ends. So. I like to have this gentle brush where you know you figure out like oh this belongs to this this belongs to that oh that's nice that's lovely you know just casual little baby steps instead of you know instantly getting your reward I feel like it is a way more I know that it might be not a better or well not a great efficient way to do so such things but it does feel me it does give me more you know feeling it does give me the more the feeling of satisfaction satisfaction and because it gives me the more satisfaction i will this the feeling of satisfaction will give me more motivation to continue that's the idea so by doing this i will gain satisfaction upon this
And I wonder if I do the same. I could do the same right now with the same thing, but I don't know if that, that plan will work properly. So that's the idea. So anyway, let's continue further. We're working here with like a mo we're working here with a Morpha project, which is like really uh hard to do this this type of calling you know it's uh, like takes a lot of brush strokes takes a lot of time but i don't mind i don't mind i have all the time in the world i need and i'm just producing you know i'm just taking my time taking my baby steps because you know art that is rushed is never good so yeah a rushed art is not so good as a normal, you know, take your time and have your feelings into it, go into it. It's like if you do an art, if you make art and you rush it, like intentionally, you're probably gonna be ending up with the wrong. You're gonna probably end up in the wrong side of the field because you know it's. Eh, you learn a lot by rushing, yes, true, but if you want to do it successfully, like then you actually need to put a whole analysis on what what did you do wrong what could you have done better next time you know all that stuff and normally when people do rushing they don't look back so they don't they don't self reflect afterwards which then cause them to um cause them to uh see see a uh, don't see a problem that has been caused by their own hastefulness Eh, hastefulness, yeah, sure, why not? That's a word, right? So yeah, they they are caught. They they cause themselves to rush, and therefore they made a mistake. Therefore, something is odd in their artwork, and they don't want to improve that because you know they figured out like, eh, I already I already have done it. Why should I? Why should I? You know, fix my problem. Why should I fix the problem that I made? Well. If it would have been, if it would have not been, you know, if it would have been more like, uh, if it would have been seeable, seeable, like you know, an, an error that has been that is, you you can see that there is an error in your artwork. You could a perfect it by you know removing it and then you know try to do it again. B you could ignore it which then you know with a rush project you most likely do or see you could work around it that's also an option but that normally changes the way how the artwork feels i think but you know that's my that's my thing like i don't know yet that kind of approach but the main problem is that you know artwork uh rushed it it just doesn't feel like art if it is like really rushed and you know you can see that it is rushed you can see the mistakes and sometimes it's intentional then yes then it is good but uh if it is not intentional then probably it's not that good it's like it gives you a quick concept of how you supposed to draw it like you could do it for a sketch yes when you sketch, you could go for like a quick drawing, and then use that sketch to perfect your drawing. That's why it's called a sketch. It's not your end result. It's just a sketch. So yeah, uh, I think that's, I think that's it, right? That's all I need to tell. Probably there was something I missed, but eh. But yeah, I'm now currently just working on these feathers, you know, fix them up, get them towards. But yeah, this tool is not suitable for, you know, coloring most of the times because, you know, it, it does everything like in blocks. But the good news is, because I'm doing everything in blocks, it means that I can actually improve. What do you mean? Now, well naturally i will follow the drawing so natural nat naturally i will get uh highlights 
Yes. So I gain more natural highlights. Therefore, eventually I can use, once I'm gonna go towards the highlight section of it, you know, when I'm going towards the highlight section of this drawing, which, you know, it's gonna be taking like a long time before I'll be able to, able to get there, but once I'm getting towards the highlights, I can then, you know, already see where I need to put them, because they're already in the drawing itself. And since they're in, in the drawing itself, I don't have to worry about, you know, ruining the artwork with the highlights that much because you know they are already naturally there so if I just you know increase them a little bit you know it should be fine so technically I'm already doing two jobs at once and I think that is a good thing yeah that's a good thing if I'm correct So yeah, that's thing. Uh, bruh. I just went into a, I just went into a, into a thought process. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to think like that. Like holy hell, I was just thinking about some stuff, and I'm like, uh, and I should keep on talking. That's a better thought. That's a better thing. Keep on drawing and keep on talking, or keep on coloring and keep on talking. It's funny, you know, that. Sometimes you just, you just are, you know, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Am I even right? Am I even wrong? I don't know. So yeah, it's a thing that can occur, you know. You're not supposed to be scared of it, you just need to accept, like, sometimes, you know, you're right, sometimes you're wrong, but most of the times you just need to accept if you're wrong that you are wrong, otherwise things don't go as planned. Most of the times. Anyway. So, uh, let's see. What did I do anyway today? Oh, uh, yeah. I am working on, you know, I'm working on, uh, my writing again. So that's good. I'm now finally, uh, at the start of the new chapter, chapter 9. So I already finished chapter 7 and now I'm gonna do chapter 9. This way uh, my chapter actually, the chapter will actually work. Because you know I need to, this chapter actually establ uh, establish law. So this, this, this chapter has like a lot of law dumps in it. Well not a lot but it does have some. Because I want to set the envi- I will, I want to set the uh points on like how do the antagonist oh wait you have protagonist and antagonist antagonist is the person that that the protagonist needs to defeat if I'm correct so the bad guy is getting introduced so the bad guy is getting introduced and you're gonna take you're gonna see like this guy just gets butchered a lot. Is getting butchered, but because he made a fatal flaw, he made a fault. He made. He made. He he was unsuccessful in his doing, and he's getting punished by it. Why? Because the uh, the bad guy actually has like a real uh, hatred towards the situation that's going on. He's getting defeated in his own 
at his own game, so he's getting beaten in his own game, and he cannot stand that. Why does he cannot stand that? Because you know, if they, if they, if this goes continue, if this war continues, then you know he's he's fucked, because things don't go that way or his way, then yeah, it, it's not going to be ending well for him. It's not going to be ending well for his kingdom. He achieved already so much, and why why must he now bow towards the other forces that you know he tried to beat already in uh, already beat tried to beat for hundred of year hundred of years? So yeah, this 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 person is just like, oh hell no, I'm not gonna give up just yet. I am not gonna be I'm not gonna be the person who's gonna be pulled. Pulled out of this fight, I will. Su I will succeed. I will do whatever it takes to take these to take these people out. I want my kingdom, and I'm not. And I'm gonna be die, uh, die fighting for it. So yeah, he has determination, but he's also angry about the situation that's occurring. His realization upon you know knowing that he's gonna be maybe losing a war. That will severely cripple his empire is not gonna be a great thing because you, nobody wants to be on the losing side of a war. Nobody. So yeah, it's gonna be harsh. It's gonna be hard for him to realize that you know such things can occur. So yes, this guy just got got his got his dinner just served cold. Ah oh, man. So yeah, the bad guy is in a pro has a problem, and he's trying to you know. Uh, he has a little temper and outrage, like you know, he's like, ugh, god damn it, and now what? And yeah, and the guy who brought the bad news is not gonna be in a good shape to uh, live. Uh, so yeah, the guy who brought the bad news just gets gets wrecked by you know the bad guy because you know you're not supposed to bring bad news when you know such a bad such a bad news that the bad news is such is very worse that you know you're gonna get those sweet ass Vietnam flashbacks back. Yeah, that's like no, you don't you don't want to have a repeat on what. What's gonna happen if your kingdom is losing to a war that you're trying to win? You know. So yeah, this bad guy is is gonna be is gonna be out of the picture if he's not doing anything. So he's gonna be finding a solution to fix it. And the solution is really easy because you know he's calling a meeting, and then you know we meet our main guy that we have been following for like. Well, we did not follow him, but now we're getting introduced to the main character that, you know, who's gonna bring us the main character. So the guy, the guy who's gonna bring us the main character, the, the guy who's gonna be the henchman of, you know, the bad guy. The guy who's gonna bring in the good guy in the situation with the bad guy. So, the good guy, you know, because the good guy's already told him about what they're gonna doing, what they're already doing, and there's a meeting about this, so there's a meeting about the energy crystal, uh, well, the energy crystal that they're looking for, so there's a meeting about that, and everybody knows already, like, they know that, what the, oh yes, kind of forgot. Okay, I kind of forgot. So yeah, these these bad guys are you know really really bad guys. They 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 don't they don't go without. They just don't want to go away. So yeah, the bad guy wants to have this energy source because you know he is planning to undermine undermine the dwarven kingdom by 
destroying their uh, destroying their underground base by you know by a machine, but this machine needs power, and this is where the good guy comes in. So, well, the good guys come in. So, they are gonna bring the power, eh, not forcefully. Do it forcefully. So they're gonna bring in the doom machine, or well, the energy source for the doom machine, not willingly. You know, that's how it's supposed to go. So yeah, um, that's around like where I'm now at. Like I need to write the conversations down, like how this is all gonna be going out. Like I am not good with some conversations, and I'm definitely not comfortable with you know how to write them because I'm not good with social encounters or social conversations at all. So I need to figure out like. How would this person react upon this news? How would this person react on this news? Because I have like these captains, these people, these advisors from the king, and I need to make sure that they all have like their own agendas, their own way of you know reacting to this kind of news, so that you know like, oh, this guy wants this from the king, this guy wants this from the king, this guy wants this from the king, and you know. Why are they in the war? Why are they joining the king's war? Well, apparently because of this. Apparently because of this. You know, that kind of stuff. Oh, hey, Mark. I hit a roadblock. <laughs> I always do write... I I have hit a roadblock. I always do a writing. I, I can't decide between a tragic or happy ending. I should have a tragic ending. But I can't help but write... Oh... Uh, Right, tragedy. But I feel like it's meant to be potential. I I feel like it's mean potential to the reader. Oh, hey, Mark. Yeah. You know, if the story wants, you know, if the story wants to have the bad ending, like you know, if the story truly wants to have the not good ending, like if the story calls for it, like. Oh yes, this strategy will happen eventually. Then why don't you write it? Like, not every, not every, not every, not every, not every happy, not every story has a happy ending. You know, it could also just be bittersweet, something like that. So, don't worry about writing a writing a sad story. Trust me, I know exactly where this story is gonna go to. This story is not going to be about rainbows and sunshine. No, 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 no. This story is about being on the losing end of a uh, losing end of a war. Or well, being forced to be on the losing end of a war. That's worse. You're being forced to be on the losing end of a war. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be draw that's going to be a ra that's what the story is all about. It's about, you know, you're losing you're losing because somebody dragged you into this. And you don't want to be in this play. You don't want to be in this in this situation. But here it is. You're screwed. You're really not happy about this situation. And of course, the main hero tries to, you know, get. Uh, the main hero tries to. Um, uh, help, you know, the situation from getting not worse so tries to tries to prevent everything from getting worse but you know what is done is done and he is not able to do so he's not able to get all the he's not able to get all the stuff you know that he wanted he's not able to get every get everybody on board get everything you know how he visioned it it's it's a vision of lies. It's it's all you know. You cannot do this, you know. I trusted you, and then you know everything just turns out bad because you know things get 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 from bad to worse. The king wants the king wants them now, you know. Put some innocent people on the block. How are you gonna try to prevent that from happening? How are you trying to prevent yourself from being involved in all this madness? Eventually, you know, the king is. Eventually, the king will see, you know, reason. But 
that's only on the bitter end at the end of all of this. So yeah, uh, let's see. Okay. Now I need to know where this all ends. Hold on, I need to zoom out on this part. Alright, where did I... Wait, hold on, where, where, is, where is it now? Where did the... Did I just lose my blood damn pencil? I did. That's not good. Now the quick question is where it did go. <coughs> yeah, yikes. Alright, uh, I just had it in my hand, so it's supposed to be somewhere. No, no. This is a problem. This is a magnificent problem. I was just working. Oh, there it is. Alright, good. Found my pencil back. Whew, alright, uh. Alright, so where did the last part go? Where did the last part So here is the line that I need to follow. So I'm gonna put a line down. Just gonna put a line down. Just gonna put a line down. Uh, like this. Yes. There you go. This line I need to have. Not this. This this is not this is not important. This part is not important at all. This part is not important. I just need to have this part. Alright, so we're gonna put this on really low. Like I know exactly how long. Now we're going back to page layer 18. So yeah, um, no. But yeah, the uh, the whole thing is about you know losing war. So yeah, they they. The the main the main antagonists and the main protagonists are all are in the same you know problem. They're on the same they're on the same page they're on the same problematical page. Downside is only that you know this this problem is not going to be solved by itself. You know, you know. This losing war bears. They are going to drag a whole civilization with them. That's the main thing. Like, could you live with yourself if you knew that you could, you know, if the whole damn thing you want, you know, you wanna, you wanna have freedom. Could you, would you, you know, risk it all? Would you risk it all for that? Would you drag your whole damn fucking world into oblivion to get just a little grasp of freedom? That's the idea. Oh, hey, Gentleman Salami. Nice to see you. Remember to like the stream, my dudes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. But yeah, that that's the idea. Like you want you want to you want to you want to have like this whole damn world be ter ter torn apart for your freedom uh, for the freedom of your people. Would you do such a thing? Would you destroy? Everything that everybody has built on, you know, but they build the world upon it. Would you wreck it and destroy it just to have your own damn freedom for your people? Would you would you risk it for your people to set send them to war, fight 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 battles for them, so that you know you could live another you could live to see another day. And you know it goes to the extreme. It's like these people, you know, the, these people are suffering already. They are like really suffering. They are not healthy because you know all the people that you know fight for the king are either cursed or you know their souls are already at at 
are at the mercy of you know the king himself so you know their loss it's a lost cause for them at least it's not for the, it's not for the world but it's for them if the king dies they go with him now that, that's the idea like if the king dies the whole damn thing they build upon the whole damn world they live with goes with them it's like you know if if the per if the person you know that granted you life was dead, then you know everybody dies w um, that you know he granted life to, which creates this airy feeling of you know should I even try should I even try you know r should I even want to have the king to die you know do do I want to have this man you know who is obsessed of you know setting their peop uh, setting his people free from you know the grasp of the corruption that is already spreading through the world that he knows and wit witnessed you know do you do you want to see that you know he, he knows that there is a corruption spreading but you know people don't believe him he liberated the he liberated his his people from the tyranny ty tyranny of his mother because you know that's how it is it's a uh, it's a red dragon that you know ha it was actually the was in charge of this you know civilization before he taught he tore that apart you know to give them freedom but at a cost a cost of their own souls to be bound with him so you know the people that he set free the people that work for him you know they don't have souls they they, they they're just am they're empty vessels that just only have the memories of, you know, the soul. So normally a person without a soul would die, but they don't because, you know, they they still live. But the longer they stay alive, the more, you know, corrupt they get. So it's actually technically really bad for them to be alive this long. And now that the now that the dwarves already found a way to uh disconnect the disconnect you know dis or disable you know their bodies from being resurrected again which was a major t major feature of them it now you know spreads fear into the hearts of the king like realizing that his forces are no longer internal his forces are going to be running out and running out quickly because he already lost one legion of 150 men. The idea of you know realization of like oh shit my people are dying. How am I gonna do this? How am I wait? How am I am gonna be waging a war that I cannot win unless something is gonna be changing? Unless something is gonna happen? And yes, there will be something happening. There is, you know, they're they're already trying to find new ways, you know, to try to win this war. One of those ways was making a, a bloody damn cannon that uses energy crystals to, you know, uh, an energy uh, using ener uh, energy to, you know, charge up and then fire. That would maybe shatter the whole mountain. And if the mountain would shatter, then the whole dwarven fortress will be gone. But, you know, the king is against, you know, using soul energy for that because, you know, he doesn't want their people to die. He doesn't want their souls to be suffering. So he's not going to be using their souls to, you know, charge up this machine that might or might not work. He doesn't want to risk it. And since that, you know, one of our, uh, well, uh, how do you say, one of our guys that we already have seen... Is Julius is come and got, uh, is, knows about it, the energy crystal that you know our adventurers are looking for, and he knows where the adventurers went because you know they they told him all about it. They told about how great and awesome this new adventure is gonna be, and Julius is gonna be like, "Hey, wait a minute! We can maybe find this energy source and then take that and use that." So yeah. The king is gonna be trying to ask Julius about this and uh, let him, you know, do his thing and get this get this energy crystal because he doesn't want his people to die for it. For you know, liberating the dwarven kingdom, he doesn't want their souls to be gone. 
because if their souls are gone, you know, they are they, they will be no more. And then you only have empty husks with the memory inside of it, which, you know, is not a very, very nice thing to have. So yeah, Julius is going to be trying to do that. But then we have Julius, which is a man of talking and a man of money. He is a really corrupt man. He is like the most... He is like, I don't give a shit what I did. I just love killing people and I cannot die. That's even better. He even put, he even made a pact with a he even made a pact with a uh, with a with a with a shadow that you know the shadow will feed on the emotions of of his victims to you know grow even stronger and in in return he will lend you know the shadow will lend him powers to you know move uh, unseen or blur someone's vision or you know be able to just drag and kill someone on sight you know. So yeah, th this man is not a very nice man. It's literally the whole thing, you know, people are feared about, you know, people with no soul that could live for eternity. They slowly go corrupt. But this guy is already corrupt. This guy is like a really psychomaniac when it comes to killing people. He does it really good. No, 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 no offense, he's doing, it he's doing a really good job at assassinating people. But damn, if, you know, this is what the... All the factions are fearing, you know. The, if this, you know, if this goes, if this goes, if this even goes further, you know, and you have these immortal assassins that just come back again every single time you kill them, you know, you should be very fit. You should be very scared of that, you know, having to deal with these assassins that learn how you work, how you fight every single time you die, or every single time they die. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, th these. These, these little things, these, uh, ph well, philosophy, maybe that's the word. I don't know. Uh, the little things that make the make make it make makes it scary. It's like the bad guy. The bad guy has his reasons to, you know, liberate this whole, uh, liberate this whole place. But he also has his reasons, you know, why you should never want to have this bad guy to, you know expand or you why this bad guy needs to be stopped it is logical why it needs to be stopped because people are afraid that you know this is this is unnatural this is not this is not the way to do it and people fear him people fear his powers and you know they want to you know they want to be they want to get rid of him and what, so what they did was actually you know find a way Ask the gods about a way, and you know the dwarves apparently found a way. So yeah, and now the king needs to deal with that problem that the that the dwarves found a way. So eventually, you know, it uh, gets a little bit complicated, but I think I think event I think it will be a good thing. You know that 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 once I'm done with this whole uh once I'm done with this whole story, I think it will be looking just fine. I think this will be a great, you know, start to be told. Oh wait, I know my ending now. An extremely bitter we <laughs> bitter sweet ending incoming. <laughs> nice. 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 So yeah, um that's at least what I'm that's what I'm writing. At least. So I'm writing I'm writing a thing that's, you know the philosophy like you're on the wrong side of a war, you're getting dragged into the war, and you know that you're screwed. You didn't do any- you tried your very best to prevent as much casualties as possible. But you know, every single step forward is 20 steps back. Yeah, that's- that's the idea. So, you're getting dragged into it, and you're fucked. So you're hoping that the king will win because you know then you will not die. But if the king dies, then you will, you probably won't survive because you know you're probably gonna get executed because you worked with the king. So yeah, because people see the king as evil, and you know eventually people grasp a sniff of it, and once they get a they get a good sniff of it. People will know, like, hmm, maybe we should send some more better or fanatic people to towards your 
towards that kingdom. Hmm, maybe we should hire some good old fashioned mercenaries to take out this kingdom. Or find a new way, like religious way or whatever. You know, all this. Ask God's warriors to help us in our need, you know. All that stuff. It's really cool. Oh man, this looks so. This is already so much work. Hi, it's already almost 50 minutes in, and I am now done with two parts. It sounds interesting. Thanks. 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 It sounds interesting. Yeah. It it, it really is interesting for me as well. Like, I am not good of a writer, but I try my very best to put that image into it. But yeah, I need to first. I first need to have chapter nine on uh, on on my you know laps to you know uh, get everything rolling. Let's say at least it's like it's one of the activation buttons. Chapter nine is like one of the activation buttons of like if you know what chapter nine is all about, then you know where this is gonna be going. That's the idea of it, at least. So yeah. Also then you get to know the king and then you already know like, ah, this guy is a bad guy. Yes, he's a bad guy. He cares about his people, but he is a fucking bad guy. He murders children on the blood. He, he murders people that don't support him. Yes, he's a bad guy. Does he give a shit about his family? Or about their family? Yes. But still, it's a traitor, no matter what. You need to kill him. Because otherwise, things will not go your way. That's how this king thinks, at least. In my book. Oh man. I think even if I just, you know... I think uh, tomorrow I will be working on my overlay as well. So, I'll show you guys first what the over overlay looks like tomorrow or well. At least give you guys a quick review of what I'm going to be doing. So... Probably gonna put. I'm probably gonna be recording this. Well, the the overlay re, uh, overlay uh, thing. It's gonna be cheerful, so don't worry about it. I was thinking about making it more like a card, but no, I think a cheerful would also be good. You know. I don't know. Should I do it in this style? So should I do it in this kind of style, or should I do it more in the uh, style that you know the bomb man has to the. Uh, the guy, the, the bomb itself. So should I do it in that kind of style? Because I'm still wondering like, hmm, should I go it like that or should I go like the other style? Because you know, I have two different styles. <laughs> okay. I shall. I shall. Well, I shall ask you. Once I'm done with writing it. At least. Which probably is going to be taking two months because, you know, I'm not a very good writer and I always take it slow with writing. Same as with drawing because, you know, I make so many mistakes it's not even funny anymore. It's like looking at myself in the mirror and seeing like, ah, yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah. The overlay, I'm thinking like maybe going for it's probably this style since it's more representative or uh on what your stream uh, on what you do in the streams typically. All right, then um, I'll use this style instead. That's gonna be fun. I'm thinking about going oogle booga, yeah, like this uh feeling, you know, this ancient feeling of you know. I don't know if you have seen ever seen uh, totems or something like that. That kind of feeling, like wood with totem uh, kind of earth style. So probably an earth branch or something. So that goes from uh, how do you say? Goes from here towards here. Yeah. So around yeah. So the earth branch that goes around here. So it's like only down it's only like downwards part so it's gonna be downwards and then it's gonna be like over here so because you don't need to see the layers doesn't have to uh, uh, deselect yes deselect 
Hold on. I'm just gonna be wondering, right? Is this all about, you know? Oh my, I can do this? Nice. Can I now draw over this? Eh, that's helpful. It's actually quite helpful. I like it. I found a way! Ha ha ha! Take this, game. I found a way to fix my own drawing. Now I'm gonna go back here. Do -do -do. Wow, you can actually go for that kind of thing? Yes. Whee. This solves a lot of problems. I'll say that. And now I can just say deselect. Boom! And I can see exactly where I did draw. Nice. Well, it does save a lot of problems. I love how I actually implanted already shading into my drawing. That's what's the good that's what the real good thing about it is. It's like I already can see where, you know, this is going. Like if I now zoom out, boom. This is what's go this is what's gonna be happening. So I already know where everything is. So that's good. I know I did something here wrong. Probably, but uh, I should then be. And uh, I could, I could do this, but ah, uh, yeah, I need to fix this part. I need to fix this part right over here. So I need to fix this. But oh, let me save just here. All right, so you can already see where this is going. I mean, it wasn't not that hard. True. But looking if I'm making too many scratches, probably not. Just that you know, I'm glad I'm doing it like this. All right. Well. Um. Anyway. So I hope you'll enjoy it for today. Even though you know it was just coloring one color in. But yeah. I think tomorrow I will be able to finish up that part right over there, so I can fix this part, this part over here, and then fix this part, and then I will be able to, you know, continue with the rest of the strings that I need to do, before I will be able to start with the beautiful colors that, you know, are existing in this artwork. Anyway, um, I hope you all enjoyed for today. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, have a nice day. Bye.